Hi, my name is Kevin McCarthy. I'd like to talk to you about an example I use in teaching management and teamwork. And yes, I call it the management philosophy of the octopus. Now, I know there are not a lot of octopuses heading up Fortune 500 companies these days, but I think there's a lot that we can learn from the multiplier effect of coordinated intelligences and teamwork on problem solving by examining the octopus. SETI astronomers and science fiction writers have long been scanning the skies in search of alien intelligences. The possibility of other thinking beings excites our imagination. However, the best place for an immediate look at a truly alien intelligence is in our own waters. I give you the octopus. A quick look at the brain of an octopus shows that it's fairly simple and not all that large. However, it turns out that the octopus is able to solve highly difficult problems. It has demonstrated creativity and a sense of play that is usually only found in much larger animals, with, uh, much larger brains, I should say. An octopus has a highly complex nervous system, only part of which is localized in its brain. Two-thirds of an octopus's neurons are found in the nerve cords of its arms. Each of the arms has limited functional autonomy. Here we see an octopus operating a camera in a laboratory. Now the researchers think this animal may actually understand that it is creating images of its visitors. Nevertheless, it has learned to operate the mechanism. The result is a creature with an amazing ability to figure out complex problems. A few weeks ago, Inky the octopus managed to escape from the National Aquarium in New Zealand by a drain pipe. Staff believe that in the middle of the night when the aquarium was deserted, Inky climbed out of its cage and down the side and across the floor and down the drain pipe. Rob Yarrell, the national manager for the aquarium, said that octopuses are famous escape artists. Because octopuses don't have any bones, they are able to fit into extremely small spaces. They have been filmed fitting through an opening the size of a coin. They are also understood to be highly intelligent and capable of using tools, as we can see in this photo here. I'm not sure if that fork was part of its meal or what. At the Island Bay Marine Education Center in Wellington, New Zealand, they discovered that one of their octopuses was sneaking out of its cage at night, visiting other cages and stealing crabs and taking them back to its own cage. <laughs> Octopuses have opened jars and Tylenol bottles. I have difficulty opening Tylenol bottles. <laughs> Here's a picture of an octopus opening a jar from the inside. Octopuses have been filmed taking two halves of a coconut and making a shelter out of it. Octopuses have been seen taking pieces of coral and shells and decorating their home. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah. I don't know if they put up flowers and vases, but if one starts hanging curtains, I won't be surprised. All of these examples of intelligence are all the more amazing when you think about the fact that octopuses only live for three to five years. They don't learn anything from their parents because when two octopuses meet, they either mate or they kill each other. Not a great way to pass along information. These amazing creatures learn by trial and error, and yet they only have one twentieth of the neurons that we have. How do they do it? It appears to be the result of teamwork. Somehow, the eight subsidiary brains coordinated by the central brain acting as a manager produce a whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. That is to say that the input from nine cooperating intelligences produces greater results than could have been expected from these brains acting alone. This example, I believe, provides us with a method for examining our own behavior as a species in a way that we might be able to produce greater effects than we've ever thought possible. 
I'm suggesting that cooperative intelligence rather than competitive intelligence may prove to be the greatest disruptor of all time. So what is a disruptor? It's an idea, it's an event, it's an invention that changes the course of humanity in a significant way. Fire, for example, makes technology possible. Without it, we would still be hunter-gatherers who wouldn't be able to attend or enjoy a TEDx presentation. Prior to the harnessing of steam, we had to rely on animal and wind power for transportation. Steam ushered in the Industrial Revolution. This development completely disrupted the agrarian nature of our society at the time. Steam magnified humankind's ability to influence its environment. The telephone, radio, and television ushered in an age of communication undreamt of up to that time. Television helped share American culture around the world, changing the way people thought of themselves and others. Despite the existence of the telephone, cell phones changed everything again. All of a sudden, through the science of digitization, communication became much more portable. This development helped topple governments during the Arab Spring. Authoritarians everywhere fear the power of portable communication. As the digital revolution continued, we suddenly had full-range computers in our hands. This has been greatly augmented by our ability to access the cloud. The cloud, itself a mechanism for cooperative information sharing, may prove to be one of the greatest technological disruptors of all time. Let's change perspective for a moment. In the 1980s, Americans were concerned that Japan's economic expansion would mean that Japan would end up owning America. There was even a joke that was popular at the time that World War II was a diversionary tactic so that Japan could land a division of salesmen on our west coast. Nobody in the 1980s really foresaw the invention of the internet. This particular disruptor changed the course of American economics. American entrepreneurs immediately leapt to monetize the internet. Despite the boom and bust of the dot-com era, online businesses created a whole new class of billionaires and greatly added to our gross domestic product, while that of Japan and Europe languished. No one talks of Japan buying America anymore. Americans working in new cooperative ventures turned the internet into a huge moneymaker, while entrepreneurs in other countries rarely did the same. Even though Americans think of themselves as rugged individualists, management experts are realizing that cooperative intelligence is more productive, effective, and creative. Cooperation between scientists, entrepreneurs, universities, government, and investors is revolutionizing the way we live. Let's consider the fight against cancer for a moment. Medical researchers used to conduct their investigations alone until publication, and then they had to wait for peer review. This could take years. Recent practices involve the sharing of information established in 2001 through a partnership with the Cancer Research Institute and Ludwig Cancer Research. The CVC Trials Network is a coordinated global team of over 60 of the world's top clinical immunologists. For the first time, Medical researchers are regarding the war on cancer as a cooperative effort instead of a competitive one where in lessons learned are hidden until publication. So how do we make this work? Well, the disruption that is caused by intelligent teamwork depends upon respect and valuing cooperation instead of control. As managers realize the power of enlightened coordination, new solutions become possible. Now, the great danger of any group situation is groupthink. Groupthink is when one or a few members of a group 
lead the rest of the group without them thinking about what they're doing. Groupthink led to the rise of Nazi Germany and the horrors of World War II. We avoid groupthink by respecting, valuing, and encouraging the input of team members. America leapt ahead with the internet because we were willing and able to share information and to think cooperatively. After all, we're the ones who invented open code. Now, other nations might not be where we are right now, but they're learning. They're going to learn what we learned soon. So, how do we keep the lead? It's pretty simple. We came about our traditions of enlightened management and cooperative teams organically without much intention. We did it mostly out of necessity most of the time. This came about in part because people are no longer willing to be controlled. If we want to keep the lead, we must become intentional about developing our culture of cooperative teamwork. We need to maintain, of course, and cherish our traditions of individualism, but we must do so within the goal of mutual support and success. So what about our drive to compete? Well, anyone who's ever played on a sports team can tell you that you can compete very effectively and energetically within the context of the team. We have the lead presently. Let's keep it. Go team. Thank you.